Welcome back friends. Now that we have seen how we can add new items to the shopping cart using the append command, the next logical question is how do we handle situations where the user has made a repeated order? Say ask for a repeated item. What I mean by that is that say user has selected milkshake in the past and now again user wants to add milkshake to the shopping cart. First let us see this a little bit more graphically to understand the case that we are talking of. Then we go to the code and then I'll also give you the equivalent scratch commands because I think that will give you a lot of perspective uh, uh, on what's going on. So like I said, let's start from you know uh, this, this problem we are trying to solve. Previously, we have looked at a situation where whenever user picks up a new item, we keep adding that to the list and for that we use the append function. Now we are saying that user chooses something which is already a part of the shopping cart. So for example, here, user had say five units of eclairs previously but now user goes and chooses another four units which means that now this item is no longer unique it is a repeated purchase now if we understand this carefully and if you look at this even in this diagram we'll realize that what we really need to do here is that we do not need to change anything in the shopping cart however we do need to update the shopping quantity the shopping quant because remember this these two lists are in perfect sync again so when user wants three units of milkshake we say milkshake and three when user want five units of eclairs we say eclairs and five user wants four more units of eclairs so we are going to say eclairs and nine now if you you know if you think through this a little bit you'll realize that i am not changing the shopping cart all right but i will have to use shopping cart list anyway to figure out which index of shopping quant I must change because I must change the corresponding index. So for example here, eclairs appears on index number one of the shopping cart and hence I must go and change item number one of say uh, shopping quant, right? So that is the logic we are going to follow. Uh, let us see this in uh, in the code first. Um, obviously it's a little bit uh, you know difficult in Python because you don't get this visualization like scratch and that is why I've tried to create this visualization for you. So make use of this. If needed, create your own visualizations because that will actually help you. Now, coming back here, remember we must write our code in this part where we have a repeated selection and we come in here because menu order minus one is in shopping cart. Remember, this is like un list contains the so shopping cart. You can say contains menu order minus one and hence we are going to now do our code in this portion. Now, remember, what do we need to do? We need to figure out where in the shopping cart did this item exist? Now, some of you might be confused here. Why do I need to figure this out? Isn't it already known to me that milkshake is on index zero, ice cream is on index two and so on and so forth. However, the answer to that is no, because milkshake is in index zero for the list menu. Whereas the list shopping cart is being created on the fly is changing. Perhaps the user first chose to purchase, purchase chocolate, in which case chocolate will appear on index zero. We'll see some examples of this. But what we are going to do is to use a particular command in Python. I'm going to say index is shopping, say shopping cart dot index. And what are we finding? We are going to say menu, uh, say menu, say order minus one. Now what this means is that it's going to tell me what index is that menu order minus, minus one item located at. And why did I use menu order minus one? We have seen previously. That is basically the order that the user has placed. Now, just to make this clear, we are going to put a print here for now so that we can you know, understand what the values are uh, and how it's evolving. And once we know this index, then all we really have to do is that we have to go to the shopping quant list uh, to the same item in the shopping, say shopping quant IDX and update this item, which means that I'm going to just say shopping, you know, shopping quant idx plus this quant uh, remember so if the user had order, ordered let's say um, five previously five units now the user is ordering three units so it should become five plus three the five would have been added first time round from this part of the code let's see this working first and it will become a lot more clearer as to what we are trying to say so i'll stop this for now and i'll start this again uh, so user says enter one to five to select a food item six to proceed to check out let's say i say four which means that i have selected an eclairs and i say want to purchase two units of this now this was obviously a new selection when we first start lists are empty hence it's a new selection but now i can you know uh, so it has added that to the shopping cart as we've seen previously now let's say i say i want to purchase a three 
uh, say I want a chocolate again this is a new item uh, so I say five units this is a new selection because I had selected eclairs and now I have selected chocolate so chocolate was new but let's say at this point of time previously I had purchased two units of eclairs now let's say I go and choose four once again four requires four means eclairs so I say you selected eclairs how many units want to purchase so I am going to say say let's say um, previously I had done two units let me say say four units this time round now this time round I have gone into repeated selection and my IDX is zero because the very first item that I selected was eclairs which means that in the shopping cart list the index the, the index of eclairs is actually zero uh, now let's say I will just check out at this point and I can now display my shopping cart so if I say display my shopping cart, it's going to show eclairs and chocolate and my shopping quant is 6 and 5. Now it became 6 through this process. Like I said, this because we are not able to visualize this real time, it gets hard. But go back to the visualization that we had done. First, we had ordered eclairs, which means the index of eclairs. I mean, the shopping list cart became eclairs. The index of that item must have been 0. That's why when I printed index, I got 0. Uh, and next, I got a chocolate. Uh, I mean, uh, next, I, I just change this value here. Let's take one more example to make this more clear. Let's say I first select milkshake and I say I want, say, you know, uh, say maybe four units of milkshake. Now I go and select eclairs and I say I want, say, three units. Again, I go and select eclairs and I go and select, say, three units again. This time my index is one because the same eclairs is ending up on the index one of shopping carts. And this is happening because first i selected milkshake then i selected eclairs like i said if it helps you make a diagram of the sort that i had drawn and you know if i now move this away uh, if i look at the shopping let's say shopping uh, shopping quant i am going to see four and six because first time round you know um, user wanted to select let's say three units and then user again wanted to select say uh, three units so i've chosen ice cream sorry not eclairs but ice cream here uh, but it's the same thing right so if i look at the shopping uh, say shopping cart then it is milkshake and ice cream uh, i think i mentioned eclairs but what i meant is ice cream here but you can see that clearly that particular index in the list is being changed like i said the lack of visualization causes it to become a little bit hard compared to scratch but talking of scratch let us go back and see what are the corresponding functions that we are using and that i think will make a lot of bring a lot of clarity to this so uh, by the way what we have done is something similar first we select a milkshake then i chose ice cream and when i you know wanted ice cream again it went and updated index one of the shopping court so that is the example i just gave the second second example like i said before all of this is corresponding to scratch we have seen if you know um, shopping cart contains something this we already seen if something is in shopping cart next we are finding out the item number of something in shopping cart so this statement item number remember gives us the index and we do that in python using this index statement so we are saying idx is shopping cart dot index menu order minus one next we are updating a certain list shopping quant we used to do that by using replace so replace certain item with say some item plus one of its say like this same item plus one it's a little bit more concise in python we are just saying that item is equal to that item notice these two are same plus quantity but really we are just replacing the value at that you know item in fact this is an interesting point that we are able to replace these values that we have created and that's a property of lists in uh, it, it was there in scratch it's also there in python before i wrap this up i just want to make one comment here for those of you who are kind of familiar with this in fact you can write this a little bit more concisely so i can also write this as and this may confuse you a little bit but if it's confusing you can drop it for now in fact you can write this as you know let's say this uh, plus equal to now plus equal to means that it's exactly this like shopping quant plus quantity so i'm just saying take this and add to that quantity so if, if this is you know a little bit more concise syntax i can indeed do that now i can take one more example let's just take say one more example here so that becomes even more clear so let's say i say first say pick up three i selected chocolate i want two units of this next i go and select let's say four which is eclairs and i won't select say six units of this i say again i go and select chocolate uh, so i said okay i said three so three is chocolate and this time i want to select let's say 
uh, you know one unit of this index will be so is repeated selection when i printed index i got a zero and if i were to check out now so my shopping my shopping uh pink cart is chocolate and eclairs and my shopping quant is three and six respectively because three because first i selected two and then i selected one more now like i said because these lists are not being visualized uh, you know displayed on the screen it gets a little bit tricky but really the concept is the same as what we have done in scratch go through this slowly go through it systematically take as many examples as you want to visualize the way you want to visualize and it will indeed become clear uh, remember these functions we have already done previously also in scratch i hope this made it somewhat clearer take care thank you so much bye bye